to the nearly 300,000, over 300,000 people who will be moving to both Tacoma and the surrounding cities that use Tacoma water, and we need to have that water available for them, and we want that water available for other small businesses that, you know, frankly produce more jobs per gallon of water use than that stupid methanol proposal. Um, so, I mean, it, you're really deciding your future, and you know, I'm happy to be and honored to be able to represent so you. So, what if we run short? Could they allocate to these industries? What if you keep you run short? So, I, in terms of researching what happens when there is enough water, 2015 provides a great case study. Uh, there's a four-step process. Step one is notify people that there's a pending water shortage or is a water shortage. Uh, hope for you know just some public awareness. Second step is voluntary uh, demand decreases, and that basically is asking people to stop watering their lawns. I personally think watering your lawn should not be a beneficial use of water, but it is considered a beneficial use of water. But that's the main thing that they did. So in that voluntary thing, there's a bunch of steps that individuals can do. I mean, they're asking like restaurants to not refill glasses of water. But yet, the only thing that they say for industries to do is to check their cooling tanks to make sure there aren't any leaks in the cooling tanks. That was the only thing on this list of 10 things that actually applied to industry. Everything yeah, else. They didn't ask anything this last, this last right. August. They didn't ask anything of industry. Yeah. But they asked us to cut back. Yeah. So then, step three is actually demand and require certain water. Uh, prohibition. So that's where they would actually say you cannot water your lawn. But they're probably not going to do that to industry. And then step four is just basically drastic martial law as far as water use is concerned. But does that drastic martial law 